I wanted to do Casper's Haunted Christmas. I didn't want to wait till next yeah. year. <laughs> They're like cursed to a Christmas town. Chris, Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, at least the little girl thinks that Casper is a magical snowman. All right, magical snowman, I accept that readily. A ghost? Wait a minute. It's going to take some time for this mm. one. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> Christmas is over. <laughs> Nothing's happening in January, so it might as well yeah. still be Christmas. Se second Christmas. <laughs> second Christmas. <laughs> the people don't want to wait a whole year. They're dying for a sequel. Christmas 2! Christmas 2? I wanted to do Casper's Haunted Christmas. I didn't want to wait till next yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> no time! There's no time. There's too many things to do. So I thought uh, I would waste a precious slot. <laughs> waste a precious slot. A precious that movie precious night January slot. slot. You can never have too much Christmas. Who says that? We, we do. do. Movies in January. There's so many good choices. Uh, Casper's Haunted Christmas. <laughs> We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're back. So this is a weird one. <laughs> I thought that it was a Saban movie because there was a period of time where Saban owned Casper, like the the home video. The home Casper. video. Rides. Yeah, it was. We the have same. Casper at home. That's we what they. <laughs> <laughs> they realized that they could get the home video rights to a bunch of things. Richie Rich, Adam's Family, Mistake, both movies that we covered. I thought that this was part of it, and Ziggy's part of the <laughs> Saban lore now. Yeah. <laughs> Ziggy loves Saban, don't you? She said that we hid her paper <gasps> that she wanted to play with. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be in this, didn't you? Yeah, we, you want a little Santa hat? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? The home Saban. video rights, Saban. Yes, okay, so Saban did two Casper movies. They did Casper Meets Wendy, and they did Casper A Spirited Beginning, both of which were live action. But Spirited Beginning was kind of a, a mix of CG animation and live action. And they established somewhat of a lore uh, in this prequel that didn't really make sense to the movie it was a prequel to, where there's like a scare school, a ghost king of sorts. At some point in time, Universal got the soul rights back in the Harvey Corporation that did the comics. Made the comics yeah. yeah, so Saban didn't have the rights anymore, but for some reason they decided to continue the Saban lore in this yeah, one. Yeah, it's weird. It's like it's a sort of continuation, probably that as well as a continuation as Spirited Beginning. Spirited Beginning. I did see Spirited Beginning. I can't say uh, if it was any lower or higher quality than this, <laughs> but I will say. I was surprised at how funny some of this was. Yeah, there's a mix of decent jokes in here. I was ready to just crap on a bad <laughs> like, early this CG is just movie. Garbage. Yeah, I was like, this is an early CG movie. It's gonna look bad or whatever. But it was the same company that did Beast Wars and Reboot. Yeah, mainframe. They even reused some of their. They reused the Noble <laughs> Werewolf, which was from Beast Machines. They reused that as a werewolf. So I guess that works. Yeah. <laughs> we need a werewolf model. We already got one. Throw it in. <laughs> so I don't know if like I think. I think the writers weren't the ones from Spirited Beginning or from Saban. I'm pretty sure Saban didn't have writers. <laughs> they didn't have writers. They just kind of made it up as they went along. Not a lot of <laughs> <laughs> I think there were people involved with Mainframe and similar CG type movies that were involved with this, but some of the writing was actually kind of funny. There was still like some awkwardness to it, just like there's weird pauses and some of the animation can be a little janky sometimes. I don't know. I was surprised by this one. Yeah, like, Mainframe was pretty good at getting something, I guess, out of their CG animation, whether there's a big budget for it or not, so yeah. it's not as garbagey as some CG things you'd see from 98. Yeah, I'm gonna say Spirited Beginning probably was animated worse, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they were involved <laughs> with the animation on that one. I uh, want to say yeah. no. <laughs> probably not. Saban's not paying for Mainframe. <laughs> <laughs> now I got you, you little... <laughs> Anyway, before we get too much further into this, uh, a brief synopsis of the plot of Casper's Haunted Christmas. Casper has fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> again. He's fucked up again. He it's has... kind of a classic Casper plot where they're getting after him for not scaring people. I feel was like that, that a lot of Casper plots? I feel like that was, was in like some old He wanted cartoons. to be friends with them. And then I think they... he wanted to be friends, but I feel like some of them is be like they'd get after him for not scaring people. Okay. Well, at the very least, the enforcers in this one are Saban original 
novels. They weren't from the comics or anything. But the ghost police, the enforcer of ectoplasmic laws, uh, <laughs> is after him for not scaring at least one person a year. They've also summoned the king of ghosts, Kabash, and he orders that Casper's uncles make him scare someone before Christmas Day. Kabash is kind of evil Slimer. Yeah, evil Slimer. <laughs> and in the meantime, his uncle's haunt licenses are revoked. No more scare tactics. For no them. more scare tactics. <laughs> so they can't scare anyone. They have to make Casper do it. He won't do it. Instead, he befriends a little Christmas girl. So they gather some characters from the comics and old cartoons, Spooky and Poyle. Poyle! 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 Shazam! So uh, they want Spooky to take Casper's place because he looks kind of like him and scare people. A bunch of Christmas shenanigans happen. That is the somewhat not so brief synopsis <laughs> of <laughs> Casper's Haunted Christmas. The end. <laughs> They're like cursed to a Christmas town. They're like banished to a Christmas town. Chris, Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> banished to Chris, Massachusetts. But we hate Christmas! You? <laughs> <laughs> it's working real hard to get booted. banished to Christmas town. That's you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> they hate Christmas, but they have to go to a Christmas town where everyone loves Christmas. They meet the Jolly Moors, right. <laughs> who love Christmas the most out of this Christmas town. <laughs> the ghost trio get like sucked into a mailbox. <laughs> I think they were supposed to have, like, just flown into it as they're flung into the Christmas town and the, somehow they, they landed in the slot or something. I want to talk about the werewolf movie they're watching in the drive through <laughs> There's two old guys having a weird conversation. One of them's like, I'm thinking about getting my navel pierced before the werewolf kills them. I've been thinking of getting my navel pierced. You don't say. This is an old black and white movie. Yeah. <laughs> Weird thing right. to be going on. <laughs> and they're killed by a werewolf. This is the opening scene. Two men are murdered by a werewolf. Yeah. But it's a movie, so it's okay. Yeah, it's and then the, uh, the uncles, the ghostly trio, they come and start terrorizing people at the drive-thru. There's piss jokes. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, yeah. it looks like Fatso <laughs> eats poop from within himself. But he's okay with that. He's okay he with that. He doesn't want his brother's <laughs> urine on his popcorn, but he'll eat his own poop. <laughs> That's good. The ghost urine on the popcorn. Uh. Uh, let's just say it ain't exactly a uh, butter. Piss whacked. You're saying it's very inconsistent when they can hold something inside themselves or they eat it and it falls to the floor. Yeah, they do a reference to the 95 movie where they eat all the food and then it's all left on the floor. This family takes them in thinking that they're actors that are auditioning for ghosts in the Christmas Carol play. They do that, but then throughout the movie, Fatso is eating stuff. I think all of them might have eaten something at some point. It doesn't fall out of them because it's easier to not mm. animate that. <laughs> Fatso's poo, too. He seems to think it's... <laughs> It's figgy pudding. Yeah, it is that's not. not what they, they're acting like figgy pudding is what people from North America generally consider pudding, but mm. it's British type pudding. What do you call jello type pudding in, in the UK? Matt will know. He'll put a text thing on or he'll he'll do a voiceover or something and he'll be like, <laughs> you fools. <laughs> that's all, all he said. <laughs> <laughs> you fools. He's got a whole uh, dissertation on pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I will teach you about figgy pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy ran away. She doesn't want to become Ziggy Pudding. Yeah, well, Ziggy Pudding. <laughs> now give us some Ziggy Pudding. Figgy Pudding! What's that? We're not really sure. No one is. It is surprisingly funny at times, though. I mean, like, there's some kind of dumb jokes. There's a smell phone? <laughs> smell a phone? <laughs> Smellular telephone. Smellular phone. I think that's what it was. Smellular phone. I'll call him on my smellular phone. <laughs> Apparently, I think as of this movie, Stinky, he likes gadgets and stuff that he just brings from within himself, like a laptop and a fart phone or whatever. I'm getting a message on my laptop. You and your gadgets. I'll connect to the world weird web and check it. I did want to bring up, they have some of the same voice actors they would use in Beast Wars and stuff, so Scott McNeil is stretched and immediately noticed that, because he's kind of going in his rat trap range for that character. Yeah, I would like to see you try it, that dino boob. <laughs> they want to see scary. He'll show them scary. Works for stretch. He also does the dad, so that's his like, well, this is my yeah. dad voice. 
I'm not really Scrooge. Really? The dad was pretty funny. I thought the family was pretty funny. Because mm -hmm. they're so just oblivious and into Christmas that, like, even when they're doing, like, they do a scream reference <laughs> at one point yes. where um, Spooky is trying to scare them and pretend that he's Casper, calls up the mom doing the scream thing, and she just wants to give him, like, Christmas cookie recipes. <laughs> do you like scary cookies? I don't think Christmas cookies are very scary. <laughs> Let me give you the recipe. You take three cups of oatmeal. Have it. Never mind. This is one of several direct references they do, which normally I find pretty obnoxious in movies, but I think they do enough of a twist on them that they're pretty funny. Like it doesn't feel like they're just yeah. saying like, hey, they this aren't thing just exists. doing a thing. They're doing a parody of it, and it's a decent enough parody for this thing. You're like, okay. At one point, I think they did a parody of those salsa commercials where they're <laughs> like, New York City. Yeah. It's from New York City. New York City? Well, this dog made New York City. New York City. Pick up the pace. One of the best is when Spooky's trying to scare the father in the shower. Yeah. They start up the <laughs> psycho music, but <laughs> the twist is Spooky just gets grabbed. And the, the father thinks he's a loofah and starts <laughs> using him to floss his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he gets flossed and I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, he falls over, zoom in on his eye. Dun, dun. This might have been Universal's best repurposing of the of the Psycho soundtrack, because they sure do it's love to do that. Very good. I haven't seen a lot of ass flossing takes on the Psycho scene. <laughs> <laughs> with Spooky from <laughs> Casper. This is like, oh, I'm the tough ghost. <laughs> his girlfriend's Pearl, but it's always pronounced Poyle because mm -hmm. of his accent. And they even just credit her as Poyle. And I guess that's something that it's they did in the, in in the, the comics, comics as well. I got nothing for you, Poyle. 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 Poyle! You're a bunch of joiks. <laughs> joiks. You're all joiks. I guess it was just the kind of thing a joik would do. You big joik! But anyway, he got flossed in a guy's ass. <laughs> That's the important thing. <laughs> and then Fatso went up and got the pudding off. <laughs> That's spooky. Mm. It, I cannot stress enough how much it looked like he just stole <laughs> shit from within himself and started eating it. It was quite off putting. Different when it's your own brand. <laughs> Keep Delicious. your ghost piss away from me, Stinky. <laughs> you get on your smellular phone. <laughs> we are never gonna talk about this incident, ever. So a reference that made more sense was uh, they did a direct ripoff, basically, of the Grinch, and they start doing the voiceover, like the Grinch, Dr. Seuss stuff, because the uncles decide that they're gonna steal Christmas. We should have had this on our best Grinch list. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you put them? Where would you rank them? <laughs> the highest to make everyone angry. The Grinch of all it's, time it's is the ghostly It's above the 60 <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah. 60 special move over because stinky, stretchy, and fatso are the Grinches of all time. We've actually created a new tier that's like God Grinch. That's... Yes. <laughs> but I think that the most likely reason of all, they were jerks. You're all jokes. So they do that because they're going to steal Christmas because it'll lure everyone to the Jolly Moore's house. They say that they stole all of the stuff so that they can set off a time boom. They're going to bomb them. They are scarerists. Scarerists. They, they can't be doing that. <laughs> They're gonna blow them up. They don't explain that this will do anything but blow things up. They just say it's like a normal bomb, but scarier. And so they've had their means... haunting licenses revoked, so they're really playing with fire. Yeah, well, they they're trap... not supposed to be scaring anyone. They trap Snivel in uh, no, Santa, Santa, and apparently he couldn't call uh, what's his nuts <laughs> Kibosh. They couldn't call. He couldn't call the king. <laughs> you know, really, they're they're defying the monarchy. So are they really kind of like heroes in this film? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're like Snivel. His voice Voice is kind of like Crispin Glover doing George McFly. Officer Snivel, enforcer of all ectoplasmic law. I'm George, George McFly. 
I'm your density. But yeah. in the movie before this, it was Polly Shore. Yeah. And we know how Polly Shore voices the character. The sniveller has sniveled his finest snivel. <laughs> Do you like they have a joke about that, though? Because at one point, they want to get rid of snivel. So they go, oh, yeah, there's a Polly Shore movie th marathon going on. A festival. <laughs> a festival. Like a film festival. A festival. As if there isn't yeah. a festival dedicated <laughs> solely to Polly Shore films. And he yeah. is in. There's a Pauly Shore Film Festival playing downtown. I'm there. Pauly Shore <laughs> financed this for Pauly Shore. Yeah. <laughs> there is one fact that I can both. Wendy has meant a boop, 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 boop. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, it's this guy doing a weird impression of Polly Shore that I feel like is probably not that close yeah, it, to how he did it. It's George McFly more than Polly Shore. Yeah, and Kibosh was voiced by James Earl Jones mm -hmm. in his initial appearance, but now, I don't know, I don't know who voices him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't think it was bad, but it wasn't James Earl Jones. No, it wasn't James Earl Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they had anyone from any of the original No, I think it's all Vancouver voice actors. Oh wow, a ghost! I love ghosts! Bet it's fun. Hey, we've got a lot in common. My name's Casper. Casper. I feel like to when the ghost trio go check out this Christmas Carol audition, they just see a sign that says Ghosts Wanted. Yeah. They're like, oh, that must mean us. They don't know <laughs> it's just for an acting gig. Does that happen very often? Yeah, we just want actual ghosts, please. <laughs> come over here. But the best part is that they didn't get the part. Yeah. <laughs> they audition and they're like, no, thank you. And I love Stretch's reaction like, <laughs> they didn't get the part. We were looking more for an idiot in a sheet. <laughs> You're just not believable enough as ghosts. We really are ghosts. Too bad about that lame audition. Yeah, better luck next time. I guess the family thinks that they are ghost actors who just are method actors. And, well, at least the little girl thinks that Casper is a magical snowman who's yeah. been brought to life. Yeah, for some reason that's Casper's cover. I don't yeah. want to say I'm a ghost. I want to say I'm a snowman. It takes her the entire movie to realize he's floating. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, wait a minute. <laughs> really slow. How did a trans translucent snowman that goes through things. Like, how did you fly? Did, <laughs> something doesn't add up here. You're like when Casper meets Holly Jolly more. <laughs> she's kind of like over the super Christmas stuff. And yeah. She's kind of complaining about her name. She's like, can you imagine if your name was Holly Jolly more, Casper? And he's like, <laughs> hmm. Then he imagines the theme song with her name. Pretty good. Well, how would you like it if it was your name? Holly Jolly more friendly ghost. Wouldn't really work for me. I like that they got Randy Travis to sing that parody version of the song as well. <laughs> mm. They only credited him for two songs, but really it should have been three because he did the Holly Jolly yeah, Moore the version. Holly Jolly <laughs> Moore, the friendly ghost. Now I'm going to have that song stuck in my head all day. Holly Jolly Moore, the friendly ghost. Glad they got Randy Travis to do songs for this. <laughs> it was really weird, the tone at the beginning, when it's like they're doing all the scaring, but then you have Randy Travis country music <laughs> She thinks my tractor's ghostly. <laughs> no one likes that song. <laughs> Except my dad. <laughs> Randy Travis is like falsely attributed. Yeah, to me. I, didn't I didn't do know, that. I didn't know she thinks my tractor's sexy. I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> it's for slander. Yeah, the Holly Jolly Morse. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Randy Travis has rarely been in anything good, if ever, acting-wise. <laughs> but he does seem like a nice guy. He just seems like he's cool with whatever. Like, mm. he'll do whatever project. So, Randy Travis, you got a thumbs up for me. <laughs> I saw you untouched by an angel. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky and Poyle, mostly Spooky, have created a rift between Casper and Holly. Spooky gets Heroine. a little annoyed because he's trying to scare her, and she's just like, Oh, hi, Casper. He's like, oh, You're a joik! You're a joik! <laughs> And apparently she knows that means jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of you and your whole crazy family. You're all joiks. I guess it was just the kind of thing a joik would do. I don't know where Casper suddenly got that accent, but yeah. I guess he thinks I'm a joik. I hate him. <laughs> like, can you really be that terribly upset when someone, even if they mean it, call you a joik? <laughs> I feel like you can't be too mad about that. <laughs> I don't know how angry I could be at a snowman that's flying around. <laughs> 
I love like, all right, magical snowman, I accept that readily. A ghost, wait a minute. It's gonna take some time for this mm. one. <laughs> Since when can snowmen fly? I'm not a snowman, I'm a ghost. A ghost? A member of the living impaired? She's rebellious in the town that loves Christmas the most with parents that love it more than anyone else. <laughs> They've got like, a bathroom Christmas they tree. They have a bathroom <laughs> Christmas tree. They have a wreath on their toilet. <laughs> you imagine that wreath after like December? <laughs> you like, gotta take that, oh no, poop particles on it. <laughs> it's all wilted and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fatso's like, oh. <laughs> delicious. Delicious. <laughs> The ghostly trio, they get in trouble in the end. So apparently Casper and them and Spooky and Poyle are gonna be banished to hell if Casper doesn't scare anyone. Literally like a ghost hell is where they're gonna be banished to. It's the, yeah. what, what is it in uh, Get Out? What is it called in Get Out? Matt knows, it's like, <laughs> you idiots! <laughs> now you're in the sunken place. Sunken, sunken place. place, that's what it was. They're going to be banished to the sunken place, which we knew immediately. Yes. So anyway, Casper ends up scaring the ghostly trio by pretending that Kabosh has come to get them. So that counts as scaring someone. Apparently you can just scare a ghost and it counts, even though I thought it was supposed to be a person. I don't know. I don't know. Kabosh is actually pretty forgiving of a bunch of shit in this movie, because yeah, at one they point... Do, they do assault him at one yeah, point. Yeah, they assault him thinking it's still Casper's little puppet. Yeah. <laughs> and then he comes back, he's like... Oh, kind of mad about that, but not that mad. <laughs> he's like, well, you're all going to hell anyway, so yeah. <laughs> I'm not too upset about that. Well, he's going to send them to hell, then it's pointed out that Casper scared them. He's like, okay, I guess no hell, and give them their licenses back. You didn't have to do that. That's extra nice. They don't need <laughs> well, to get their licenses Well, we only had their licenses back. taken away because they had to make him do it, and it mm -hmm. was their responsibility. So he was right. going to give them back until they found out that they had broken the rules and they were scaring people, but then they had a really good cover. They said, no, all these boobs booby traps and this boom was for us mm -hmm. so we could just torture ourselves for you and then they tortured themselves for a while <laughs> kind of, i guess that laughs. sort of makes it up for yeah. them like i guess you guys hurt yourselves so, yeah. okay and then they had to change their sign that said season of scaring and they're like oh it's sharing yeah. look you'll see it on screen that's what it said. <laughs> they changed scaring to sharing. <laughs> and much like the Grinch, they don't really talk about the things that can't be returned, like the food. Now that figgy pudding's coming back. No. Yeah, they didn't show us the next scene where all the town came to that house yeah. and then beat up the Jollysons. What are you doing <laughs> with my Christmas in your house? <laughs> yeah. They belong to everyone in Chris. The whole town will be showing up to get them soon. We'll give everyone the best Christmas party ever. Excuse me, we didn't want to come to your house for a Christmas party. We wanted to have it with our family. <laughs> I'm tired of you jolly moors. We Thinking own we Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> and then they steal their toilet tree <laughs> to get them back. I don't know how the stuff from everyone in town fit in their house. It didn't seem like that's feasible. Jolly moors are rich. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Holly. We're talking about the inconsistent uh, physics with Casper, and I just wanted to point out that commercial with the Pepsi, oh, where he idiot. tries to get it out of the fridge and he couldn't. Yeah, he's phasing through the fridge and then holding onto the Pepsi. It's yeah. like, just open the fridge, Casper. <laughs> Casper, you idiot. <laughs> it's like we see him holding a bunch of objects in this movie and then he phases through Holly when he tries to give her a kiss under the mistletoe. Yeah. You control this, Casper. <laughs> He's not very good at it, is the thing. <laughs> That's why he needs to go back yeah. to scare school or whatever. He needs to learn more from Poyle, Poyle. <laughs> Poyle! Did you like Spooky and Poyle? <laughs> Guess they're kind of amusing. Kind of like when they get more of the ghost characters in there besides just Casper and his uncles. Yeah, they were building a lore and it wasn't really uh, that annoying. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. I was prepared for like Rap City Street Kids <laughs> level of... <laughs> Fatness, you know? Casper, like, floating along, looking in one direction, kind of floating diagonally in the other. I feel like people probably dunk on this stuff because it's the first purely CGI 
CG animated movie, and it is like a downgrade from some of the like live action ones, but I feel like for what it is, it was a lot better than I expected. Do you think it's a downgrade from the Saban live action ones? Uh, like it's... Holly Shore <laughs> Snively. Um, they also have Gutenberg, okay. Uh, I, I honestly could not tell you now. It's been a long time since I've seen it. It probably is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared, okay? Don't be scared of a little boy g ghost! <laughs> I wish someone would just talk to me. But Casper meets Wendy, to be honest, I kind of liked that one. <laughs> About Casper meets the fuck. Uh, <laughs> downgrade. <laughs> that was this one, isn't it? <laughs> Kibosh yeah. meets the fuck. <laughs> it's Casper goes to hell. <laughs> yeah. He was gonna send him to hell. I feel like they have jokes too about the fact they are dead. They can reference that and like, you know, when they weenified real Ghostbusters, like, don't mention that ghosts are dead people. <laughs> no, they could be dead in this. The uh, spirited beginning begins with Casper dying. Mm -hmm. He's dead and he gets on his train and even know that he's dead. Mm -hmm. Hilarious. Because Kabosh at one point says, I'm gonna skin you alive. And he points out, you know, I'm already dead. Give <laughs> <laughs> me one good reason why I shouldn't skin you alive. I don't have skin and I'm not Alive. They also included coupons for Baskin Robbins because apparently they made a Casper themed ice cream. <laughs> Which uh, was plain vanilla. <laughs> they didn't say on the wiki what it was. What was the Casper themed ice cream? Did anyone have that <laughs> around then for the Casper Christmas movie? I'd love if it was shaped like Casper's head and you're looking at it and his head just gets droopy. No. Oh, it's like those, uh, those gumball popsicles. Yeah. I'm sure they must have a Casper one at some point. They oh, should. There was a really funny part we didn't mention where the uncles are gonna leave and then they turn on the ceiling fan at the same time <laughs> and then they get chopped up into little ghosts yeah. and become snow. It's a magical magi Christmas. Yeah, that's their magical Christmas ending. That's what they end on. Extra dead <laughs> ghosts. They die twice. Yeah. <laughs> There was a, a real Ghostbusters where there was all those little Slimers, right? Yeah, yeah. Episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but less annoying. It's all magical. <laughs> I've come to pieces. I feel flaky. I love surprises. You didn't see this because you went to the bathroom and you'd had enough, but they did some fake bloopers at the end, too. They might not have been fake, though. I think some of them were set up, but I think some of them might have been them just goofing off in the studio and then they just animated it to look like the ghosts were recording it themselves. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! Is there anything else about Casper's Haunted Christmas you want to talk about? Need to get some more figgy pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's good. This was actually surprisingly funny. I would recommend it to people. I didn't think that I would, but it was pretty amusing. Yeah, it's a fun little Christmas special. Yeah. Oh, like <laughs> songs for animated Christmas Yeah, specials. that was another decent joke. Yeah. <laughs> but it was funny when it cuts to Casper with the dumb song. Yeah, after. doing the say anything thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They had that weird part where they're like on killer whales and that, <laughs> yeah. and I did love how bizarre that, that was. was. <laughs> and Holly, remember the good times when they used to ride whales <laughs> and they shot sparkles out their blowholes. <laughs> yeah. You stayed home and rented Free Willy 3. <laughs> Now that we've talked about all the good bits, you should see it yourself. <laughs> it's on DVD and VHS. You can watch it in widescreen or full screen, so pretty cool. Give you the option. Pretty <laughs> sweet. Mm -hmm. Check it out, guys, and have a merry January. That's all jokes! Stop getting into things. <laughs> she insists on being bad while we're filming. Oh my god, what <sighs> is she into? <laughs> hey. Ziggy! It's important that we have lots of footage of us scolding our kids. Yeah. You're all jokes!